Good morning and welcome to our online Sunday morning service here at All Saints Anglican Church in Amishford. It's good to have you with us and hopefully you've got sight of the liturgy or words of prayer and praise that we'll use in the coming hour or so. So as we begin we pause as we turn to that liturgy now. Let us worship God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. This is a day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And a prayer. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's sing and praise our God together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again. before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord Oh my soul Oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like this
And so we have sung, we have praised, and now we spend a few moments in quiet prayer bringing to God the things that we celebrate about the previous week and the things we're concerned about in the coming week. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price. Asking this through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As we turn to prayers of penitence, we take a few moments for our personal reflection. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. We have sinned. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. We have sinned. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. We have sinned. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. We have sinned. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. We have sinned. Save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. We turn to song and worship again.
We come to our scriptures and we'll now listen to David as he reads words from Genesis, from Jeremiah, chapter 2. The word of the Lord is taken out of Jeremiah 2. The word of the Lord came to me, go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says. I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held like guilty and a disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, your descendants of Jacob, all you clans of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your ancestors find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed wordless idols and became wordless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and ravens, a land of droughts and utter darkness, a land no one travels and no one lives. I brought you into a fertile land to eat its fruits and rich produce, but you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. The priest did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I bring charges against you, declares the Lord, and I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Cyprus and look, send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Yet they, yet they are not gods at all. But my people have exchanged their glorious God for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, you heavens, and shudder with great horror, declares the Lord. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the springs of the living water, and have dug their own citern, cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. This is the word of the Lord. I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures that fade Are never enough Then you came along And put me back together Nothing is better 
And so we now come to our gospel. Our gospel is from Luke chapter 14, beginning at verse 1, and then moving to verse 7 to 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. When Jesus noticed how the guests picked the places of honour at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honour, for the poor person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, Give this man your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honoured in the presence of all your guests. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers or relatives, or your rich neighbours. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so as we come to our sermon, let's pray. Father, we ask as always that these spoken words would be faithful to your written word and they would lead us to the living word your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. What words uh, would you use to describe God? Rock? Father? Faithful? In Jeremiah 2, God says he is the spring of living water. Water is a common symbol in the Bible. Uh, the people who heard Jeremiah share this message in Jerusalem, they were aware of how precious water was and the threat of it running out. Psalm 65 is a song of praise to God, a God who hears prayer, who answers prayer, who forgives. He is praised, and one of the reasons he is praised is his answers to prayer, but a second reason is his provision. Verse 9, you care for the land and water it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water You provide to provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. Central to God's provision is water, is rain. Have we lost that sense of rain as provision from God? Years ago when I was able to be in Kenya, I was struck by their new prayer book, which included a prayer to God for rain. Now, it just seemed so unreal to me at the time. I was coming from the United Kingdom, born in Northern Ireland, a land known for its rain and grey clouds. In fact, it's been said uh, that we can experience Northern Ireland four seasons in one day. But you know, go to parts of Europe at this moment. Go to Northern Italy. Go to the River Po, as Italy experiences its worst drought for 70 years. A prayer for rain doesn't seem so out of place. How important to many people in that region are that the rains come. Water, part of God's provision for his people. God provides water, which water which means life. Water for Hagar as she flees Abraham and Sarah. 
In the wilderness, part of God's provision as Israel traveled to the Promised Land was through supplies of water, both miraculously as well as guidance to the right spots. Water is also in scriptures used metaphorically. Psalms speak of, I have come into deep waters, the floods engulf me, pointing to a feeling of being overwhelmed, of being lost, of struggling. In the New Testament, when Jesus met a Samaritan woman at a well, she had gone there to collect her water in the heat of the day because she was not welcome in her village. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. A spring of water. Just like what we heard God say through Jeremiah. Relationship with Jesus brings us into that living water. And months, uh, perhaps one or two years later, in Jerusalem, Jesus himself says, On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Words from John 7. Jesus says, whoever believes in me, rivers of living water will flow from within. And that beautiful image in the final chapter of the Bible, Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of, of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Jeremiah proclaims in Jerusalem, God is the spring, the fountain of living water. Jesus declares in Jerusalem that whoever believes in him will have a river of living water, a spring of water within them. And in the new Jerusalem, we hear there will be a river of life flowing through it. To the people of Israel, water was life and blessing. God through Jeremiah and later Jesus declares that he too offers life, blessing, refreshment right to the core of our beings. It's a powerful image. Over the summer I was away for a couple of days with Callum and we walked past a small canal which was just slowly drying up more and more. The ducks were being squeezed into a smaller and smaller space of water. The canal bed was just mud and you could see stuff on the bottom. It will continue to dry up unless we get some significant rain. It will dry up. But God says he is a spring of living water, a fountain. He will never dry up. There's no dry season with him. God says for everyone at all time, he is a spring of living water who offers life, refreshment, blessing. Isaiah 55 are words to the people of Israel when they were in exile or perhaps just upon their return from exile. They are broken people and the cry of the Lord to them is, come all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you have no money. Come, buy and eat. Come, all who are thirsty. After all those re uh, visions and revelation, in John's final conversation with Jesus, in the light of all that he has seen and experienced, Jesus says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. The Spirit and the bride say, Come. And then John says, and let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty 
come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. Come. Are we thirsting for the Lord? Come to him. He is the spring. It can be a thirst because we want more. Come to the spring. It can be a thirst because we realize we've tried other things and they've not satisfied, that we feel dry. Come. He is the spring. Are we thirsty? Or are we going through the motions? Is faith become just religion? Can we come to him with the expectation that God can refresh us? The writer Ruth Valerio said, The Jesus who turned water into wine is with us now by his Spirit, and he delights in pouring his living water in our ordinariness for his glory. To come. God tells the people in Jerusalem, come because they have forsaken him and they've tried to find living water in other ways. At the start of the words in Jeremiah, God says, I remember, I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the wilderness, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. God speaks to the nation, the people, I remember how you were committed to me. The word devotion used points to the most intimate degree of loyalty, love, faithfulness that can exist between two people. God then, like in Hosea, God uses the image of love, of marriage. He, the bridegroom, as a bride, you loved me. Love, commitment was there from Israel. And how Israel trusted him in the past. They trusted him through wilderness that could not produce fruit. They followed him knowing it would be okay and he would provide. When I was in Israel, uh, I remember a really helpful insight that came through some of the Kenyan clergy and evangelists who were in the group I was part of. A lady there shared what she had seen on our bus journey in the Negev and around Beersheba. The ground was all brown, but you could see the shepherds leading the sheep. But there was no grass, no water. Maybe only after a, after a few hills you then saw it, a patch of grass, an area of water. But you had to wait. And as she spoke, it clicked for us. Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me by still waters. He restores my soul. I'd always read that psalm coming from Ireland, and probably like here in the Netherlands, with the mental image that the sheep can see where the water is, the grass. The only issue is how to get across the slope and past the electric fence. No. When David wrote, you can imagine it was all brown around him, and you've no idea when or where the water and the pastures will come. So Israel trusted God as they went through those wilderness times. He was their shepherd even when they couldn't see the refreshment and provision to come. And God declares that Israel were special to him. They were the first fruits of the harvest. The best of the crops, I, Exodus 23, were to be brought into the house of God. Israel is described as the best of the best. They were the ones at Top Gun. They were God's first and choicest treasures. And God says he protected them from harm, attack, disaster. And he brought them safely to the land where they now are. You could say God is saying, I remember your full-on devotion. I remember your love. I was number one. You sought to love me with everything you had. You were my treasure, valued. I remember you trusted me in hard and challenging times, and I protected you. But God goes on to say, it had all changed. All saints and folks who are watching us online, how are we doing? 
how are you doing? Do you hear those words from Jeremiah too? And think back and say, yes, in my youth or years ago, I was more committed. I can tell you stories of how I trusted God in some pretty bleak times and he got me through. I knew I was special and accepted and treasured by him and I knew nothing could stop him and that I was held by his hand. But Grant, you know, that was then and to be honest, things are different now. Could that be you? What happened? As Indiana Jones once said, it's not the years, it's the mileage. Is it what we've seen and experienced? Perhaps it's left its knocks on us. Some of our experiences, of course, have brought us good wisdom. But other parts of it, perhaps, the mileage has meant that we've picked up wounds, loss of confidence. Perhaps it's just been hard being a Christian and it's ground us down. Perhaps it's time to come again to the Father, to bring the loss of confidence, the pain, the wounds, the mileage of disappointments. Come to the Father. Father, this is how it was. And this is how I am now. You may want to pray now right where you are. Or next time you're in a church service, perhaps during the serving of communion, to see that reception of bread and wine as a step forward to going back. You may want to pray about this with others. Life groups are places where we not only study the Word, but we share honestly how we're doing, working and living out all that Jesus teaches. Or, of course, there is our prayer ministry team, available at All Saints each Sunday. Or perhaps, wonderfully, you're in another place. You maybe were in that place, but it has changed. You have returned, or you are returning. Perhaps it was due to new wine, or a camp, or a YWAM conference, or it was that day on holiday by the river. Returning to that devotion, to that trust, to knowing He is a fountain of living water. I can encourage you to share your testimony of restoration. As Tim Keller reminds us in Galatians 1, Paul shares his testimony not because he enjoys putting a spotlight on his personal experiences or because his story is generally inspiring, which of course it is, but in fact Paul shares his testimony in that letter because he believes it will help his listeners to find Christ and encourage them not to lose him or, or to encourage them to return to the Lord and to the Gospel and to what it means. He uses his testimony to help his friends, the ones he cares about in that church community. As Keller reminds us, Paul shows us that we need to have the courage to be vulnerable and to speak personally about what the Gospel, the good news of Christ, means to us, how it shapes us, or how it has restored us. Remember, Christianity is an appeal to bring our whole life, mind and strength to God, to leave out how we think or feel, is to give an incomplete picture of what Christianity is all about. Christ not only appeals to our minds, He fills our lives, He changes us. When we share testimony, we share the story not for ourselves, so that people may think better of us, but it is to help others understand and to find Christ, to point people to the spring of living water, to the grace, to the gospel, which we know can ch change their lives too. So if you are returning, have been restored, please share that testimony with others. And I'd love to hear too. And maybe it's something that would be helpful to share with the wider All Saints community. So in conclusion, Jeremiah's first public message, Jeremiah 2, 
God declares that he is a spring of living water, a fountain, and yet the, his people have turned from him, not to something almost as good, but in fact to something pretty rubbly, rubbish and worthless, like turning from a fountain to instead build a cistern or a well, but the well is so full of cracks, the water keeps seeping out. Israel are becoming dry, like the rivers in parts of Europe. Come, all those who are thirsty, God invites them. Come to the spring that never ends. God remind, says he remembers their devotion, their trust, how they allowed him to lead them, how he protected them, and how precious they were to him. And yet things have changed, how they act towards him. God reaches out in his faithful and changing love through Jeremiah for them to return. Come to the one. Come to the spring. Seek that water that blessing, that life, that refreshment, to be again how things were. We may have the mileage, but we can still have the relationship. And for those who have renewed, restored this summer, I thank God for you. Share what God has done to help others understand and find Christ, who He is and what He can do. That He says to all that the one who is thirsty come and let the one who wishes take the free gift of the water of life. We're now going to come into a song called Run to the Father. And you may want to use that, it uses words, as a way to draw close again to the Lord. Oh my 
My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father again and again I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait My heart found a surgeon My soul found a friend So I run to the Father again Wherever we are, we now affirm our faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So wherever we are, I invite you to bow your heads as Andrew leads us in our intercessions. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty and ever-living Father, in whose presence our Lord Jesus Christ High Priest and Advocate on our behalf continually abides, pleading the merits of his passion and making intercession for us. Hear our supplications, prayers, intercessions and thanksgivings. Empower by your Spirit all Christians and the work of your Church throughout the world. Give us grace to proclaim the Gospel in word and deed. Let your light shine through us. We pray for all bishops, priests, deacons and church leaders, especially our bishops Robert and David and Archdeacon Sam. Renew our hope in the coming resurrection. And we pray for Jesus' speedy return. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the Church of All Saints Amersfoort. Will you especially guide Reverend Grant, our chaplain, our wardens and council, that they may lead this congregation in your wisdom. Bless all the activities around the church. We pray for the preparations for the coming away day. We ask you to give us unity. Help us, Lord God, to minister to our families and children and pour out your blessing and spirit upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for peace, justice and reconciliation throughout the world. We pray especially for Queen Elizabeth, King Willem Alexander and the leaders of all the nations. We pray for relief of the oppressed and we pray especially for the government of this country as it faces many crises. We pray for leadership based on truth and mercy and wisdom that they may lead this country in the coming period. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the persecuted church. <clears throat> Give all Christians courage, faith, hope and love to witness to the faith that is in us in the midst of oppression and uncertainty. And this week we pray especially for Christians in Afghanistan, in Pakistan and in Nigeria. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the work of the Illyricum movement in Albania, for Adi Demo and his family and team as they share the gospel and train and equip Christian leaders in the region. Bless their church plant activities and all the small 
congregations and communities they are raising up. We pray especially for Eddie's wife, Bona, who has serious kidney problems and may have to undergo an operation. We ask you to heal and strengthen her. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, be with your people of Israel. Fulfill the promises and prophecies given to them in the days of old. Bless the Jewish people and may they draw closer to you. Will you be with all Jews, Christians, Muslims and others in the land that they may learn to live together and that all may know you as you have revealed yourself through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, enrich your church with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May the body of Christ be a witness to the kingdom to come. And will you send your Messiah from heaven, send out your laborers into the vineyard to gather the harvest. And come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we come to our closing prayers. We bring our offerings to the Lord. We offer ourselves afresh. We pray for the unreached and for the ongoing war in Ukraine. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this money to offer you, the fruit of our labour and of the skills you've given us. Take us and our possessions to do your work in the world. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Lord, we pray for the Shibusi people on the island of Maynot near Madagascar and Mozambique. We pray for these 72,000 with only a handful of Christians among them. We ask you, Lord, for more Christian workers on this mission field. We pray for people's minds on that island to be set free from the powers of darkness. And we pray for a spiritual breakthrough, particularly among the women and the young people. These prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. God of all comfort, be near to the people of Ukraine. Comfort those who mourn, those who are fearful, and those who are fleeing. Give courage to the followers of Jesus in Ukraine. Protect them as they bind up wounds, love sacrificially, and make your name known. Intervene and bring peace to this war. Give wisdom to all world leaders. Turn swords into plowshares. Amen. We bring our prayers and praises to a close in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we come to our notices and church life. Uh, three things. Uh, first of all, our parenting teenager course. Uh, this week we finished our first parenting teenager course. It was five parts with video teaching followed by discussion. To know more about how it all went, uh, to chat to, to Ninka, to David or Nora, Henk Johan or Rosaline or Marina or Yolanda. Secondly, on Thursday evening, 15th of September, we launch our new life group season. Life groups are groups of approximately around six people who meet every couple of weeks or so. The launch evening will be at our home at uh, Cosmic. 
It'll be a chance to taste a life group evening and we'll also introduce Galatians which will be our focus between now and the start of Lent in February. To know more about life groups or to ask to join one or to know more about the evening please contact Ninka van der Werk. Thirdly, our Church Away 24 hours, uh, Friday the 23rd of September 6pm till Saturday 24th of September 6pm. Held at the YMCA in Lewiston. Uh, you can camp overnight, but there is only room for 50 people to sleep over in, in seven man tents provided by YMCA. So it'll be a first come, first served basis. Or you can travel in for the evening and then return for the morning and afternoon. There will be a separate children and teenager program provided. More information on how to register will go out in the coming days and we do ask people to register if you plan to come to partly help with the planning but this is also something YMCA have asked us to do and the deadline to register will be Friday the 9th of September. So I hope to see you there. And so we now come to our final hymn of praise. Let's sing together.
Let's receive God's blessing. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve our Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.